Hello, so in this video today, I'm going to show you the best method for dodge and burn in Photoshop that I've tried. And I can tell you, I've tried a lot of them. The best thing is that this method is also incredibly easy and very beginner friendly. So let's jump right into Photoshop where I will show you the method in action. I will also show you how to use dodge and burn non-destructively so that you can always go back during your editing process and fix mistakes. Let's get into it. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. Now, technically you could use the dedicated dodge and burn tools in Photoshop. They are here on the left side. You can see this lollipop icon. That's the dodge tool. And then you have the burn tool in the same menu. So these add highlights and shadows directly. But I really don't like those tools because they directly change the pixels and that makes it very hard to fix mistakes. Also, they sometimes leave a super weird color cast that I don't appreciate. So I'm gonna leave those to be. Then the next method you could use for dodge and burn is using curves. So you could use a adjustment layer down here and adjust the curves to create shadows and highlights. That is a great method, but I think it's a bit overcomplicated. And I think the method I'm going to show you is much easier. So I'm going to delete that. Next, there's another method for dodge and burn, which is luminosity masks. That is a really great method, but it's a bit advanced and I think it makes things more complicated than they have to be. So let me now show you my favorite method. But before I do that, please help me by subscribing to this channel, like this video, and now back to the content. Okay, so now all we're going to do for dodge and burn is creating a new layer with neutral gray in it. There is a shortcut for that, of course, like anything in Photoshop. So on a Mac, hit Command Shift N, then you get this window. If you're on a Windows PC, it's Control Shift N. So we got this window and then you simply choose a mode soft light and hit fill with neutral color and okay and now you have this gray layer and because it's on soft light you don't see any changes in the image it kind of disappears and now you're going to choose the brush tool and choose a very low opacity brush maybe around eight or nine then make sure it's very soft size depending on what you're painting I'm gonna keep it medium sized. Okay, and now you can simply paint in highlights and shadows wherever you want them. Make sure your colors are set to white and black. If it's not, let's say your colors down here are something weird like pink, <laughs> then just hit D on the keyboard and it will switch to the default colors. Now I'm going to start with the highlights, so I'm gonna switch the colors so white is at the foreground, and then you just paint in your highlights, wherever you want them. I'm gonna overdo it a bit so you can see it better on the screen. And you're basically working like a painter. You're just amplifying the highlights that are already there and go slow with this. You wanna build it up slowly rather than do one big brush stroke. Let me show you before, after. So this is still quite subtle. So I could really go for it a bit more. So let me show you the before and after. I also really want to bring back some details here in this dark area of the image. You can see I've lost quite a bit of information here. So I'm going to make the brush a bit bigger and just carefully brush over those darker areas. And you see that, hopefully you can see that it's bringing back some of the blue color and just giving me a bit more detail here. So this is before and after. And then you do the same with the shadow. So just change the color to black, hit X on the keyboard to do that. And then you can add shadows wherever you like. And that's that, that's how easy it is. Let me show you again before and after. And this method is really versatile. You can use it for portraits, but you can also use it for landscape photos, for example, to make the clouds more dramatic. You could paint highlights on products or clothing. You can also correct uneven lighting or underexposure, as I've done here in this area. And you can also enhance texture like hair or fabric. You can see that quite well here in this area on the, on the hair bun where I've just made the highlights a bit more pronounced. So that's it. I hope you found this helpful. If you want a more in-depth tutorial on color grading and Photoshop editing in general, check out my video that I'm gonna link here and see you next time. Bye.